Well, welcome back. And now that the dust has settled across Wall Street, let's take a check in on and see where those markets ended up. Pausing after a rally driven by the mid-term elections there in the US. Really a relief rally the other day, uh, but today pretty much subdued. But the Dow Jones eking out some gains at the end of the day as the dust settles. But in the meantime, my guest host uh, this hour is David Bassanese from Beta Shares. And Alex Douglas as well to our studio. Nice to have you in the studio as well, Alex. Thank you. Thanks, and uh, we're going to talk all things, of course, a big week for equities market stateside and uh, we saw those massive sort of swings the midterm election forces that gridlock plus the fed as expected leave rates on hold so does this make uh, stocks more or less attractive alex douglas from uh, monex securities what do you think well, there's, um, there's certainly room for a bit of a bounce. We've, we've had a bit of a bounce, but um, it's, it's interesting. You know, there's this old investment adage that you should try to buy the strongest stocks in the strongest sectors. And uh, over the last week or two, I've been having a look at the, the sectors that make up the ASX 200. And to be honest, there really weren't too many strong sectors. Um, so I looked a bit further afield, looked at the, the sectors that make up the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. And as you look through those sectors, there are, there are a couple that sort of stand out as having held their ground quite well. Um, the one that really stands out is consumer non-discretionary, mm -hmm. consumer staples, mm -hmm. um, and to a certain extent, utilities. So the other sectors had you know, very big um, corrections during October. Um, consumer uh, consumer non-discretionary, the staples, really held up very well. And, um, you know, there have been a couple of companies there that have really been, um, you know, continuing to gain while everything else has had big pullbacks. And which one stands out in your opinion? What particular company, for example? There's one that people are probably familiar with, you know, they go and look on the pantry shelf and you'll find, you'll find little boxes in there that are labelled McCormick's. Yeah. And this company, they sell spices and, and you know, cooking stuff uh, all around the world. So McCormick's has had a very strong run. Yeah. Um, they've really been doing well now for, for several years, but it, it has accelerated since the middle of this year. They've put out some strong uh, strong guidance, uh, strong results, and it's really taken off. Well, a well-run company like that is going to weather any storm, isn't it? I think Warren Buffett once said that uh, he was being asked about, you know, Microsoft shares or computer shares, and he said, I just buy bubblegum shares because people <laughs> buy bubblegum. <laughs> that's the, what he knows. Whether the economy's up or down, and that's what he knows. McCormick's, they own some famous brands like Arm & Hammer, mm. the baking soda company, mm. and uh, Keens, Keens Mustard. And, and curry powder. Um, so they're, they're names that people are familiar with and uh, they've, they've been doing quite well. Another one is a company called Hormel Foods. Um, they produce a lot of meats and small goods. Um, they own a brand called uh, Skippy Peanut Butter. <laughs> and apparently Skippy Peanut Butter, although I hadn't heard of it previously, apparently it's the biggest selling brand of peanut butter in China. Um, so Hormel has actually also been doing very well and I guess with a market like that they'll, they'll continue on. Wow. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, I think, yeah, what, what's this reflective of is a possible rotation uh, within the sectors. I mean, the growth uh, areas of the market, tech stocks uh, in the US in particular, being very strong. Um, and, and with a more subdued market, possibly over the coming year, we may see a rotation toward the so-called value parts of the market, the more defensive parts yeah. of the market, with the market still nonetheless going up, but maybe a rotation of some of these more defensive sectors. So that may well be, you know, what we are starting to see play out. Well, just a minute, I'm going to come back to you, Alex, but first, going to cross to Cathy in their input there. And my guest host joining me for the full hour, David Bassanese from Beta Shares on my left. And of course, uh, Alex Douglas on my right. Now, I uh, interrupted you before so we could cross to Kathy. No, no. But I want to come back. We were talking about going farther afield than just the ASX 200 sectors. And, uh, and you think that APA Group was a, a good example of that? Yes, so APA uh, dropped nearly, what, about 10% yesterday um, on, on news that uh, a takeover bid had been blocked uh, on recommendation of the Foreign Investment Review Board. Um, so quite a big hit for them. Uh, now, because there are only half a dozen odd companies that make up the utilities index on the ASX 200, um, the, the index itself took quite a big hit. So when you've got a relatively small market um, compared to the US, um, you know, big moves in an individual stock can actually move, move the index around. Um, by comparison, you know, if we were to look at the utilities index in the S&P 500, back number, but, you know, there must be about 30 stocks in that index. Um, so uh, any one company is going to have less of an impact. Mm. Um, so it's quite a big move yesterday. David, you deal with a lot of index funds and, sure. and ETFs. And uh, uh, do, do you think this resonates, the, the idea that sort of buying a bigger pool in a sense? I mean, how, how hard hit does the S&P 500 index fund get if Apple has a bad day? Look, uh, 
Not a lot. I mean, I think Apple, you know, is a, I think it's, I think of the NASDAQ is about 10% uh, of the index and of the S&P maybe a little bit less. I mean, it is still, a, you know, obviously a major stock. But I mean, again, the, the, the beauty of ETFs is that you can play sector theme, macro themes. So if you like, you know, um, utilities, for example, you can go and buy in the United States, not so much in Australia, like a utilities ETF, and you can buy a whole basket of stocks that give you exposure to that theme. I mean, what we're seeing most resonate in Australia at the moment is the US tech stocks so you can buy Apple Google Facebook all in one stock now the Nasdaq EU gives you exposure to those US tech stocks that don't you don't have in, in the Australian market so ETFs are good to have that sort of global macro uh, sector uh, uh, style of investing we're seeing a lot of that now starting to develop uh, in, in Australia so not just stock picking but sector picking uh, you know uh, country picking as well you know US versus Europe versus emerging markets are there any other sectors Alex that you'd look at in terms of maybe an, an ETF uh, abroad other than just that sort of uh, what we talked about before the consumer distra discretionary sector you know it does depend to a lot um, on your time frame um, you know if we look just over the last few days there have been some big gains in sectors in the US um, you know um, technology and financials um, even materials have been coming back strongly mm. but um, I, I guess you know what I've been looking at is a slightly longer term time frame of you know, a few months um, uh, you know, it, it really just comes down to a, an individual investor's horizon. Yeah. But your takeaway, buy the strongest sec uh, stocks in the sectors? Always a good idea. And what do you think about Apple? Apple? I don't mind Apple. I've got an Apple phone, so. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks very much, Alex Douglas from Monix Securities. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Jason. And, uh, we can